and this clone for sequencing. We uh, sequencing tells us okay, uh, it reads both the strands. We sequence from both directions um, using T7 or M13 primers on both sides. The sequencing uh, tells us there is no error. The spike gene is fully intact. Okay. Uh, what we do next is we now digest this one with EcoR1 and XPA1. We could have done this directly into bacterial expression vector as well, uh, but this is how I uh, prefer. So we take EcoR1, XPA1, and we go into bacterial expression vector. You remember in our earlier uh, videos, we talked about you know PET21. We talked about uh, setting up the open reading frame. So once we will put this one, ligate it. So this is now acting as insert after digestion with EQI1 and XP1. Ligate it with PET21 vector, which is a bacterial expression vector. And you know, after ligation, steps are same. We are not going to uh, you know uh, perform expression right away. First, we are going to have ligation of spike gene. EcoR1, XPA1 digested, PET1 digested with EcoR1, XPA1, add DNA ligase, transform this ligation mix into DH5 alpha first, okay, and confirm the clone using same strategy which we did for general purpose cloning vector. Once your clone is confirmed, then what we do, we add our spike gene cloned in bacterial expression vector into now specialized bacterial strains like BL21, DLIS, these are different names. Uh, so these are these bacterial strains are very very specialized strains in which we can now uh, add lactose sugar in the media and they will start expressing spike gene because in the PET21 you know I told you we have the lac uh, inducible promoter. So, in uh, after subcloning of uh, um, after the subcloning of spike from here in the PET vector, what we will see will have let's say our spike gene, and I told you there is uh, lack inducible promoter. Um, is again, you know, you have ampicillin or canamycin, etc. You have, you should go and read the PET vectors. Um, once this cloning is confirmed in normal DH5 alpha strains, normal competent cells, you will follow the same steps. Eventually, once you have this vector, you will, this clone, you will go in a very specialized strain which is called BL21. And in this culture, when you will grow cultures of this bacteria containing uh, your expression plasmid. This is expression plasmid now. This was general purpose cloning vector. Spike plasmids. This is spike clone in a general purpose cloning vector. This is spike expression vector in which spike is cloned in an expression vector and transformed into BI21. Once you will add lactose in the sugar, uh, lactose sugar, sorry, in the media, uh, now, in this bacteria, there will be a transcription of this uh, spike gene and translation of spike gene and spike protein is formed and we can purify and that's a uh, whole lot of different uh, strategy to purify express proteins. But once you have the purified protein, now you can use this purified protein to develop diagnostic kits uh, for any pathogen, in this case, for example, corona. Uh, you immobilize this on specific materials. You can do this in, you know, specific format, 96 well plates, 384 well format plates, or 12 well plates, whatever. These are, you know, tissue culture plates. Uh, and since patient uh, who is infected with viruses, uh, coronavirus, you know, it will develop these antibodies. They are antibodies against virus. So the blood of when we take uh, blood sample of a patient and we have purified spike protein on uh, this ELISA plate or microtiter plates, you know, this purified protein will 
bind or cross react with antibodies present in the patient and this antigen antibody reaction this coagulation this precipitate in the uh, plates will tell us yeah this patient is containing antibodies against spike it means the patient is infected with uh, with the virus and if there are uh, patient samples uh, in which we don't find our, uh, our spike protein you know uh, coagulating with any antigen there is no precipitate coming up solution remains clear it means this patient is healthy it does not have any antibodies against uh, spike in its blood because uh, it did not bind you can use you know envelope you can use uh, uh, you know nucleocapsid protein it's a very very specialized uh, methodology in which you have to first predict which protein is right candidate to be used in uh, ELISA kits so that's a whole you know protein structure its availability in the in the uh, its availability to the immune response how uh, our uh, body reacts and whether they do produce antibodies so antigenicity immunogenic response of let's say spike or xyz any of the viral protein how immunogenic it is uh, so you know but for simplicity i use spike because you know everybody knows this protein so i think i stop it here uh, and this is all about your whole module of genetic engineering your whole module of uh, you know uh, recombinant dna technology how it can be used as a uh, tool for diagnostics how it can be the same PCR tool, the same molecular cloning. Remember, genetic engineering is a very, very tiny part of cell and molecular biology. What we do at LAMS is basically cell and molecular biology. This was just to fascinate you and, and to make it easier and simplify things. Uh, we use same tools, same methodologies to clone genes involved in epigenetics, to clone genes which are involved in, you know, uh, uh, <coughs> cancer cell signaling, in uh, human immunity, immune response, uh, <clears throat> the groups which are working in, uh, one of the group in our department works on uh, structural biochemistry of uh, hepatitis C virus or uh, AIDS virus. Uh, nowadays they are also working on dengue, uh, dengue and the coronavirus. So these tools, these methodologies of uh, recombinant DNA technology, they are same. Uh, we at LAMS, they are, we are using basically all these tools for uh, understanding fundamental principles of development. For example, I use epigenetics, uh, I study epigenetics of cell memory and we use fruit flies. And you know, we perform cloning and then expression, uh, you know, uh, whenever we are to characterize a gene, molecular function of a gene, we have to clone the gene and we have to go through all these steps which we talked about. So I, ho I hope you, you enjoyed it um, and I hope uh, you'll give me feedback um, if there are a few mistakes or a lot of mistakes because I'm just doing marathon sessions. Uh, I, 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 I seek your apology because you know uh, these are testing times for us uh, to ensure that you uh, learn high quality, you, uh, high quality education and your your learning process uh, remains uninterrupted uh, so thank you uh, for all the uh, uh, all the people who enabled us recording them uh, behind the camera I have you know uh, two of my nieces 